Hello my beautiful ducks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are back in The Sims 4 and this time I'm building this beautiful beach hut in the lovely world of Silani which came with The Sims 4 Island Living. So I'm not really good at huts and like any kind of tropical build and beach builds. I am just clueless when it comes to this kind of style. But I sort of figured that I wasn't ready to say goodbye to summer. <laughs> so I figured that I'd make the most of uh, the time in The Sims and decided to build this one bedroom hut in Sulani. So the idea behind this came from basically an image that I found on Google and it's very tropical, very sort of Caribbean-esque and I really wanted it to be colourful and inviting and just basically the kind of home that you would see at the beach. I mean not the beach beach but like tropical Caribbean long-haul flight expensive <laughs> <laughs> you get my drift. Like, not the kind of place that you'd see at Brighton. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with Brighton, can I just say. Like, Brighton is an awesome town. If those of you who don't know where Brighton is, basically it's on the south coast of the United Kingdom and it's like, I would say, the LGBTQ plus capital of the UK and I've always had an amazing time every time I've been to Brighton, so. In fact, I spoke about it in one of my previous videos, which I will link on the screen for you now, so go and check that out once you finish watching this video. Uh, but um, yeah, so let's get into this build. So by this point, you can basically see the outside of the build come together, and it's a bungalow, and the floor plan is very simple. Um, the build itself is very simple. It's quite boxy, but I kind of felt like from looking at a lot of reference pictures of like Caribbean style homes, um, they're quite boxy, and so I didn't feel like it was really necessary to make it overly complicated. But what I did really try to do is make sure that the landscaping was full of life, really luxurious, um, overgrown, but like beautiful and colourful. So I used lots of pinks and whites and purples and loads of uh, great greenery and so yeah. It's not an awful lot to this build, I must say. It's really designed for maybe two, three sims at a push. However, there is space in this build for like entertaining. And by entertaining, I mean that there's a really beautiful conservatory on the back with enough seating for eight sims, I wanna say. Nope, six sims. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea was that maybe the sims that live here or maybe they rent this apartment you obviously with um, one of the recent updates we can now create rental homes and so I figured that maybe you can use this house in your game as a rental for sims to come and stay in Sulani and maybe while they're staying they can entertain friends that maybe live on the island or maybe if they get to know people they can invite people back for dinner. I don't know, it's just a interesting sort of storyline that I had in my head. I've got to say when I was building this I didn't necessarily think about the sims that I envisioned living here. It was very much, I miss the summer, I want to build a summery build, I never build in Sulani, I'm terrified of building in Sulani, so <laughs> let's just pick up the game and go with it. <laughs> but I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end, it's super colourful, and I use a lot of like light wood tones, and it just feels like such a beachy vibe, and I mean I've never been on a Caribbean holiday, I've never been to well, I've the most luxurious place I've been to is probably New York, so... Actually, that's not entirely true. Okay, let's start a story time. So, those of you who don't know, I am 
born and raised in London, but my parents um, are not. So my mum is from Ireland and my dad is from New Zealand. And as a baby, I mean like really young, I mean I must have been about maybe eight months or so, but we went to New Zealand and my parents almost moved to New Zealand. So my parents like went to the travel agent because back in the, the, the days before the internet, like you had to physically go into a travel shop and speak to someone about booking flights. How crazy is that concept? <laughs> but they went to a travel agent and they discussed with this person that they wanted to move to New Zealand. Um, at the time we had a flat in South West London and they were basically talking to this person about the logistics of basically moving their life from London to New Zealand. And halfway through the conversation, my dad turns to my mum and says, I need to have a word with you. So they go outside of the shop and my dad says, look, I can't take you this far away from your family. Um, your parents are older than my parents and if anything happened to them I don't want you to be cut off from them I want you to be able to get to them really quickly if you need to so which I think is a really sweet thing to say and ultimately they decided that they weren't going to move to New Zealand but instead what they would do would take like an extended holiday by that I mean they were out there for I want to say maybe 18 months so they packed up all of their stuff went over there in the meantime they rented out the house that we or the flat that we owned in southwest london and we were in new zealand for about yeah 18 months um and basically the christmas of 1992 we decided to do like a round trip through all of our family and friends that live around the world and head back to London. So I'm one at this point, like 18 months old at this point. Uh, cute little baby, bold as an eagle, <laughs> but still pretty cute. Um, so we were flying back from New Zealand to uh, London via New York, and Arlen to spend time with my mum's family. Anyway, so a few days before we're due to leave New Zealand, bearing in mind it's summertime in December in New Zealand and we were flying into wintertime in New York, which you've seen pictures, it gets pretty snowy. <laughs> so a few days before we were due to leave, um, I was playing with some neighborhood kids and it turned out that one of them had contracted the chickenpox virus and my parents checked me over. I didn't look like I had any symptoms. I wasn't scratching. I wasn't unwell or anything. So we figured it would be fine to, to get on the plane and fly back. So we get on the plane and I am a mess. Like I'm scratching, I'm irritated. I won't settle, I'm crying, and everyone knows like if you've been on a flight with a screaming baby, it's probably one of the worst things that you can possibly experience as someone who doesn't have children. Um, so I was just acting like an absolute nightmare on this flight. And it turned out the reason I was acting like an absolute nightmare was because I had contracted chicken pox. So back in the early 90s, you know, I don't think there's an awful lot of like, not medical advice, but I don't think that people are as accommodating as they are now. Anyway, so the pilot made a emergency, an emergency landing uh, in Hawaii because that was the closest uh, like airport for where we were in the air. So. They nosedive into Hawaii, kick us off the plane. My mum, who is a very anxious flyer anyway, was like seriously panicking, hyperventilating, freaking out because all of our luggage has now gone to New York. And we're standing in Hawaii in 35 degrees heat 
in woolly jumpers and like thick socks and basically sweating our boobies off. <laughs> So luckily enough, we managed to get pretty good travel insurance through my dad's uncle in New Zealand um, and we were put up in a hotel for a week. Uh, it was cr the craziest thing. So because I couldn't technically leave the hotel, the hotel room, and all of the hotel staff were terrified of me having chickenpox and them contracting the virus, we didn't have to tip anyone when they brought us our meals they would like leave the trolley of food outside the room knock on the door and then you'd hear like this running down the corridor where the people would be terrified to even look at us it was pretty like horrific <laughs> but the guy who ran the hotel at the time he was super good to my parents and he was like look you can, one of you can come out of the room, you can go to the bar, you can go to the pool, um, but we'll just need to clean everything before and after you've been. That's fine. Anyway, so, um, where am I going with this story? Oh yeah, so basically, I guess the most luxurious place I've been to is Hawaii. <laughs> But it was a complete accident and like we had we had no intention of stopping off in Hawaii on this crazy trip from New Zealand to America to Ireland back to England but um that's what happened so I wouldn't advise uh taking your chicken pox infested child on a plane <laughs> but it turned out pretty okay in the in the end my dad tells like this really funny story of how he um he got drunk with a load of US Marines and drinking like rum or something down in the hotel bar. And he's never had rum since because it was a pretty horrific <laughs> experience. But um, let me know in the comment section, have you guys ever had like emergency unplanned holidays or has something like that ever happened to you? I'd be really interested to know because I feel like this whole story is something that I'm kind of proud about if I'm being honest with you like I'm not many people that I've come across have said that they've grounded a plane <laughs> mid-flight and kick and got kicked off but do let me know in the comment section down below if that's ever happened to you or if like you've been to Hawaii or where is the most luxurious place you've traveled to I know with COVID sort of coming to a point where people are starting to travel and feel a bit more confident with you know um tourism and that kind of thing let me know where the first place you plan on traveling is so i'm hoping really hoping that i will be able to go to america next year i have family that live in new york and my uncle has recently bought a holiday home in florida and so the plan is that my parents and my other uncle and his wife and then like my uncle who owns the house and my cousins we're all gonna get together and spend some time as a family in this florida holiday home um, and we're hoping to go next next march but i don't know it's kind of like one of those things where it'd be great if we could go but i'm still not 100 percent convinced that it'll go ahead and to be honest, like a lot of you, I still feel quite anxious about traveling. So I'm not entirely sure if I plan on doing that. But um, basically I waffled on through the whole of this video. I can only apologize, <laughs> but you've seen how it comes together. It's really colorful. Um, and like I said, you can download this from the gallery. My user ID is Law Simming. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do remember to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and I will see you all next time. Bye.